Thanks for saving me. By Asel. Chapter 5. Izuku keeps in touch with Todoroki throughout the rest of his hospital stay, so he knows when he gets released and when he's flying back to Japan. Still, when there's a knock on his apartment door the same evening Todoroki happens to return, Izuku doesn't have a clue who it could be. He's entirely caught off guard when he opens it to find Todoroki standing there in a hoodie and sweats, his hair messy and unstyled, carrying a plastic bag that turns out to be takeout. You're here? Izuku squeaks, an unnecessary question considering, yes, Todoroki was very clearly there on Izuku's doorstep in all his dressed down glory. My flight just landed, Todoroki says. Is now a bad time? A bad time for what? Izuku wonders. For a famous pro hero and extreme object of his affections to show up unannounced at his door? No, no, come in, he says. He stands aside to let Todoroki slip past him. As Izuku shuts the door, he thinks he should have thought this through better, because suddenly his tiny apartment contains exactly 100% more Todoroki than it did before, which is saying a lot. He has a ton of Shoto merch, and he's not sure what to do about it. Did you already eat? Todoroki asks. Oh, no! Izuku says. I brought you curry. Todoroki tells him somewhat hopefully, like maybe the food will result in him being better received. Oh, that's so... He wants to say nice, or could be how thankful he is in some way, but now that Todoroki has stepped into the light of his apartment, Izuku can see the signs of the fight he'd been in overseas. There's a fading bruise on his jaw and a mostly healed cut on his cheek, and Izuku forgets what he started to say because his chest goes all sore with worry again. At the same time, his stomach goes fuzzy and hot with something else. Um... <laughs> Todoroki is very attractive when he's a bit roughed up. I should have called ahead, Todoroki says abruptly. I didn't know if you'd be here, but I knew if I told you I was coming, you'd feel like you had to meet me, and I didn't want to be an inconvenience, so I just showed up. But now that it feels like maybe even more of an inconvenience. He drills off awkwardly, and Izuku realizes that his own lack of response is probably unnerving Todoroki. Izuku waves his hands anxiously. No, sorry, it's... Izuku starts to say and then stops because he still doesn't know what to say. He's so happy to see Todoroki, he can't even find the words to tell him. It's not an inconvenience. It's not, Todoroki asks. Boop! Izuku gives him an encouraging thumbs up for good measure. Not at all. Todoroki stares at the plastic bag of food he's holding. I was just thinking about what your reaction would be if I surprised you. We'll take out curry. Izuku says, not that he turned his nose up at that, it's just so cute. He reaches out to take the food and Todoroki relinquishes it. I'm coming here, Todoroki clarifies. Izuku blinks at him. You came here just to surprise me? Todoroki starts to nod and then shakes his head. Actually, I don't know what I was... I'll just go now. I know you're probably in the middle of studying or... He starts to reach for the door. Wait! Izuku yelps. Todoroki freezes, and Izuku panics slightly. He doesn't really get why Todoroki wanted to do all this, but he doesn't want Todoroki to leave either. You should stay! Only if you want to, though. Sorry, I'm not trying to make you... Todoroki is giving him this look, like he has no idea what Izuku is trying to say, which is fair, because neither does Izuku. I want you to stay. I just can't believe you're here. I'm so happy you're here! I'm so happy you are, though! Oh. This makes Todoroki smile faintly. I wanted to see you when I go back. Izuku presses the backs of his hands to his cheeks as he feels them grow hot. His mom's words keep bubbling up in his head. He likes you. He likes you. He likes you! Well, okay, that's... Well, okay. It's definitely true that people probably don't pay visits to someone they don't like immediately after flying home from an international business trip that ended with them in the hospital. Izuku has logically had to accept a while ago that Todoroki does like spending time with him. But he still can't wrap his head around what his mom is talking about. There's no way Todoroki could like him that way. How could he? Todoroki is amazing and he could find someone amazing to be with as easily as breathing if he wanted. 
He deserves to fall for someone amazing. And Izu is fine with that because even getting to be Todoroki's friend is so much more than he'd ever dreamed would happen. He smiles back at Todoroki. I'm glad you're home safely. And kind of starving. Todoroki admits, oh, I'll clear some space. If there's one thing Izuku can say about his life, it's that it has led him to places he never thought it would. Primarily, sitting on his bed eating curry out of plastic containers with Totoroki Shoto while they discuss his vast collection of hero figurines. So that one's your favorite, Totoroki says, pointing at the detailed seven-inch figure of All Might that Izuku has been waxing about fondly for several minutes. Yes! Izuku says. It was extremely limited edition, too. I actually begged my mom to let me stay home from school that day to try and buy him as soon as they started selling it, and she let me. He scared her half to death with a volume of his scream after he'd managed to get one. Todoroki manages a noise of appreciation. I wish I could have gotten one of those, too. You couldn't? Izuku asks, surprised, with how rich and well connected the Todorokis are, he can't imagine it being a problem. My old man would have made me train until I puke if I'd tried to pull that, Todoroki tells him. He was never really too happy about All Might being my favorite hero. He is? Izuku gasps. Yeah, Todoroki says. By the time I got to high school, I thought I'd outgrown stuff like that, but All Might proved me wrong. He's as amazing as everyone always says. Izuku lets out a wheeze of excitement. Really? Todoroki nods. Erase your head is too. He was your homeroom teacher! Izuku says excitedly. He can barely even comprehend something so cool! Yeah, Todoroki says. And he kicked my ass almost every day. What was the training like? Izuku asks. I give way! There's a lot of info about UA, but very little about the standard curriculum is known. In fact, it tends to be a pretty closely guarded secret, both for the safety and the success of its students. This is Izuku's chance to learn from one of its brightest alumni. Brutal, Todoroki tells him. I learned more in three years there about using my quirk than I had the rest of my life. Even though I never trained you? Todoroki shakes his head. My relationship with my dad was a lot worse when I was younger. I mean, I'm sure you've noticed it's still pretty shaky now. But I was pretty, uh, I was kind of fucked up when I got to UA. <laughs> Izuku listens to all this with wide eyes. If you don't want to talk about it, it's fine, it's just not really a pleasant story, Todoroki says. I had no intention of giving anyone the time of day when I started high school, really. I just wanted to get out and reach the top on my own so I could prove to my dad that everything he'd tried to teach me was bullcrap. And I was kind of right in some ways. Did you, um, really never use your left side? Izuku asks softly. He's heard stories about that and still remembers the first sports festival at UA where Todoroki had shot through the rankings only to be finally taken down by a young Bakugo when he had refused to engage with his fire. Todoroki had taken second place that year. Yeah, Todoroki confirms. I hated it. Hated my dad, what he'd made my life into, and a lot of what he'd taught me was wrong, because being a hero isn't just about being the strongest. But I didn't really get it yet then, either. I just wanted to be the best to get back at him. I sat with Sensei and All Might and everyone in my class. Help me figure things out eventually. But I was a complete ass for a long time. Todoroki is so laid back these days, but Izuku can kind of imagine him. Sixteen and full of himself and probably a whole lot ruder than he is now. It makes Izuku happy to know that all these people he looks up to as pro heroes now have been helping Todoroki right from the start. And hearing that Todoroki hasn't always been fearlessly confident and was just as unsure of himself back then as a normal kid makes him seem a bit less untouchable. You know, I started using my fire more because it actually made people less afraid of me, Todoroki says. Not more, like I thought it would. I didn't want everyone to think I was just cold all the time. Izuku pulls his knees up to rest his chin on them thoughtfully. I think people would have figured it out, even if you only had a nice quirk. Maybe, Todoroki says. But it took me a while to even realize I couldn't always be like that. Not if I wanted to become the hero I had dreamed about being as a kid. A hero like All Might, 
Mizuku says quietly. A thought strikes him, and he shifts until he's sitting facing Todoroki so he can stare directly at him with as much earnest intent as he can muster. Todoroki looks very... Wouldn't it be amazing, Todoroki-san? Todoroki says, you're relentless. If you won rescue of the year... Izuku continues, leaning forward in his conviction. Todoroki leans back. Oh, might won it when he was just starting out. Yes, and then several more times, I'm aware. It would be like you're following in his footsteps. Izuku points out, hands held toward Todoroki placatingly, just like you wanted. It wouldn't, Todoroki says. He slowly reaches out, pressing on Izuku's hands to push them back down. You took down that villain, and I was able to rescue all those kids because you got them to the fire escape. If I win this, it would be like, like I'm taking credit for you following in All Might's footsteps. What? Izuku says weakly. Todoroki, son! That's what I keep trying to tell you. Todoroki says, I owe that all to you. I don't even feel like I deserve- No! Izuku's voice is so firm it startles them both. Todoroki stops talking, eyes wide. Izuku takes a deep breath and leans closer again. This time, Todoroki doesn't pull away. You deserve it, Izuku says, because I couldn't have stopped that fire escape from falling, and I couldn't have saved Hana no matter how hard I tried. But you were ready to protect us even when you couldn't use your quirk. You were just as normal as me in that moment, and I bet that's even scarier when you've always had a quirk to rely on before. Todoroki doesn't deny that it was scary. I haven't thought about it like that. I know, Izuku says. That's why I'm telling you now. But in the end, Todoroki says frowning, I still wouldn't have survived if not for you. Well, I guess we rescued each other then, Izuku says with a roll of his eyes. Todoroki's smile seems to indicate he can accept this. They can't nominate me, though, so I guess you just have to go and win for both of us. Something in Todoroki's expression clears, and when he nods again, Izuku doesn't see any more doubt in his eyes. I see. Oh, Izuku says. Somehow he hadn't expected that to be the thing that convinced Todoroki. It makes his stomach all fluttery and light. Good. Yeah. Todoroki glances at him. Midoriya, you don't mind talking about this. We can stop. Izuku waves his hand. I'm fine. I gave up on wanting to be a hero like All Might a long time ago, so it doesn't upset me anymore. It's amazing to hear about this, actually. It's stuff I've always wanted to know about you. He worries at his lip with his fingers. Um, sorry if that's weird. Well, I'm probably the best person to ask. Tadadori reassures him. Izuku smiles. Thanks for the honest answers. Anytime. Tadadori says, also, your turn. For what? Honesty. Izuku's accent around them holds it. For a moment, he's worried that Todoroki is going to ask about his feelings that maybe he already knows. Maybe he thinks he has to let Izuku down gently or something. That would be embarrassing enough, but also unnecessary because Izuku wouldn't dream of trying to push any of that on Todoroki. But if Todoroki feels like he does, then Izuku must be making him uncomfortable. And once it's out in the open, it can't be taken back. Why am I your favorite hero after all night? Todoroki asks. Oh! <laughs> Izuku exhales all his breath and a relieved whoosh. It takes him a moment to respond as he processes the question, relieved it wasn't something infinitely more embarrassing. Todoroki san, why wouldn't you be? There are so many other heroes! Todoroki exclaims, startling Izuku with how animated he suddenly is. He seems genuinely perplexed. What about a million? He's all my successor. He's amazing too! Izuku says, he is a pretty huge Lemillion fanboy for sure. Then, Izuku fights the urge to cover his face. Is it, Todoroki has just told him so much and only asked for honesty in return. Izuku can give him that much. Because, you remember how I said in the interview it was because I could tell how you tried to reassure people? Todoroki nods and he continues hesitantly. I think before you, I felt a little bit like even if I'd had a great quirk, I could never have been a hero like All Might or Hawks or even the Million when he first came out of UA. I could never... I could never make people like me in the way they do. I'm too... Todoroki looks like he gets it. Too awkward. Izuku sighs. Yeah, I'm... I mean, you've met me. 
So you're saying you could see I was awkward and sensed the kindred spirit. Todoroki concludes, basically, Izuku says laughing because it's true. Less so, as Todoroki has grown more confident over the years, but 18-year-old Todoroki Shoto was a whirlwind of brusque replies, blank stares, and awkwardly long pauses. But you're still the kind of hero who makes people feel safe. I don't really have the tall, brooding, handsome thing going for me, though, so it was probably always hopeless anyway. That's incidental, Todoroki said. For what it's worth, I really think that all the stuff I didn't get about being a hero back then. In high school, I mean. You just do. You get it. Izuku opens his mouth wide, and no words come out. It was All Might who used to tell us the story of what all the top heroes have in common. Todoroki says quietly that the first time they ever face danger, they move before they had a chance to think, to save people. And that's what I saw you do. I think All Might would definitely consider you a hero. There's really no way for Izuku to respond to anyone telling him that line of Todoroki. He just stares glassily and wonders if he may be going into shock. Thanks, he finally manages to whisper. Todoroki shrugs. You deserve to know. Even if you're past it, and none of that even matters anymore, I liked you right away. Todoroki, son, Izuku says, that matters. Good, Todoroki replies. They both sit in silence for a while. Izuku would like to say more, but he also feels like he could never speak again for the rest of his life, and that would be just fine. After a moment, Todoroki says, I really didn't mean to make things all intense and awkward, but apparently that's why you like me, so... The seriousness dissipates as quickly as it came on once Izuku starts giggling. I like you for more reasons than just that now. That's a recent development then, Tadadogi asks. Maybe? Ah, nice. Izuku grins at him and he grins back. Thanks for letting me hang out here tonight, Tadadogi says. Thank you for dinner, Izuku replies. Thanks for calling me in the hospital. Izuku has another laugh. Thanks for trusting me with your number. And Tadaroki smiles at him. Thanks for saving me. The morning of the gala arrives a week after Todoroki gets back home. Against all odds, Izuku wakes up and discovers he's not anxious. He is a little nervous, but it's not the restless, audible, heartbeat kind of anxiety he gets when he's really unable to stop worrying about something. It's only a soft flutter these nerves, and he realizes it's more excitement than anything else that stirred him awake. Despite the monumental occasion lying ahead of him, he's not that fixated on what he might mess up. He's so eager to see Todoroki again that it overrides most of the potential mental stumbling blocks. Mostly, it helps to know that Todoroki is looking forward to seeing him again, too. Even though the gala isn't until that evening, the day gets started pretty early. A car comes to pick Izuku up from his dorm at half past ten, and shortly after eleven, he's being dropped off under the tarmac of a private runway offshoot at the airport. A gleaming white jet is waiting, and Todoroki along with it, standing at the foot of the air stairs. He waves when Izuku gets out of the car, and Izuku beelines for him, hitching his backpack up around his shoulders excitedly. He still can't really believe he gets to fly on Todoroki's private plane. After you, Todoroki tells him, and Izuku books it up the air stairs and steps into the very height of luxury transportation. Wow! He breathes, taking in the interior, a sleek, futuristic space that mixes dark wooden furniture with stark white and black accents to exude a feeling of class over opulence. There's literal... Couches in there, and separate rooms, and dining area. He's never even been on a normal plane, let alone one that puts any other first-class cab into shame. He's heard about pro-hero transportation and how fancy some of them tended to fly, but actually seeing it with his own eyes is beyond cool. Can I take pictures? Izuku asks. Go for it. Todoroki says, coming up the stairs behind him. I know it's slightly over the top, but it does make traveling for work much more bearable. Can I give it up? Someone says, and Izuku pauses with his phone, poised to snap a photo right as two more people emerge from one of the little lounge areas. He gasps loudly and claps a hand over his mouth. Bro, heroes, a ravenine cellophane, 
Where with him, Jimmy? Izuku stares at them both and does not move back because he's far too busy freaking out internally to move and respond. Sir Slim, as long as you keep letting us fly with you, I promise we won't make fun of your swanky ass plane. Cyril says. He turns his always on grin towards Izuku. Yo, I'm Cyril. Nice to meet you. I'm not Jacko, Obermaka says, and oh my gosh, she is even happier and cuter in person than she looks on TV. Human Daria Izuku, right? Izuku can only make some kind of wheezing noise in response to their entirely unnecessary introductions. Sorry, I forgot to warn you. Todoroki says, Ochago and Hanta are flying with us to Hokkaido because they're both freeloaders. Cyril puts a hand over his heart. Wow, we're just trying to make sure you have company and this is the thanks we get. Araraka claps her hands together. Saving time and money. Thanks again, Todoroki Gun. Todoroki shakes his head fondly. Anyway, yes, this is Midoriya Gun. <laughs> Izuku says in a rush, bowing frantically before jabbing Todoroki in the ribs. The hero jerks in surprise and rubs at his side, staring at Izuku in shock. You didn't actually forget to warn me! You just wanted to watch me lose it! Todoroki scratches his chin. Hmm. Admit it! Ah? Uh, he isn't afraid to call Todoroki out at all! Ubermaka says. I like him already! Izuku blushes but doesn't deny it. He He's getting pretty good at figuring out when Todoroki's expressionless face is carefully hiding his mischievous gremlin scheming. Fortunately, his schemes tend to be good-natured as far as Izuku is concerned. And this time, he appears to be mostly interested in surprising Izuku with a hangout involving two of his favorite heroes. Aboard a private jet on their way to a high-profile event where Izuku will undoubtedly get to meet even more. Jeez, how is this even Izuku's real life anymore? He barely has time to wonder because Uberbaka and Siro are the polar opposite of Todoroki. They're both non-stop talkers with sharp senses of humor, something Izuku has witnessed in plenty of interviews of the two of them. It's a lot more like being caught up in a whirlwind when most of it is directed right at him, though. He's already pretty overstimulated just by being on a plane for the first time in his life. That's a window. Todoroki tells him as the engine starts to whir louder outside the cabin. You can adjust the transparency from that panel. Izuku slides his fingers over the glassy touch screen Todoroki has indicated, and the black glass wall next to him shimmers and melts from completely dark into fully transparent. So cool! He can see outside the plane now as they taxi down the runway. And then they're tilting and he presses his face to the glass, momentarily forgetting his nervousness about getting it dirty in his excitement as the ground drops away underneath them. A soothing voice announces over the cabin speakers that the flight will be about an hour and a half. Cyril stretches with a satisfied sigh. This is a laugh! Todoroki, remind me to repay the favor when I finally break into the top 20 pros like... Fifteen years from now. He wipes a fake tear from his eye and a Baraka laughs. That can't be more than four years away, though, Izuku says without thinking. All three of them look at him. Cyril grins. Oh, man, you don't have to try and make me feel better. I'm not actually bothered by it. We just like to get on his case. I'm the easiest target when Bakugo's not here, Todoroki says. Exactly. Oh, Izuku says. Sorry, right? You probably have the numbers already. He doesn't want Cyril to think he's being nosy. What numbers? Cyril asks. Just the, um, the trajectory numbers, Izuku says, for your hero rank. Cyril laughs out loud. Oh, those? Forget it, I'm barely in the top 50. My agency isn't going to waste resources on hiring an analyst for me. Is it really costly? Izuku asks. He has no idea. It's super expensive. Ibaraka says, I've actually taken some courses for calculating it, so I can kind of do my own, but... She scrunches up her face in displeasure. There's so many variables! I just don't even bother, Cyril says, waving a hand. Well, um... Izuku says nervously. Should he tell them? You've done it, haven't you? Todoroki asks. He's doing that sideways glance thing at Izuku. Cyril and Ibaraka look between the two of them. Then what? Ibaraka says. I got curious, Izuku says. So, I may have figured out the right trajectory for Todoroki's dance graduating class. The others gave at him. What? Sarah finally says. I 
Ah, class? And Baraka asked incredulously, Why? Um, it was fun. Izuku offers. He's met with blank stares. I can show you, actually. He grabs his backpack by his feet and pulls out a notebook and pencil. About 20 minutes later, the tea table near them is covered in little pastries, steaming mugs of tea, and sheaves of notepaper with Izuku's equations littered all over them. The four of them pour over the notes. Top 20 by next fall! Araraga says delightedly. That's way faster than I thought! It's all my best guesswork, pretty much, Izuku says hesitantly. But I really think you could do it, Araraga san Especially if you win tonight for most popular, which I'm pretty sure you will. Izuku kun! Araraga says shocked. There's just no way the other nominees are. There's really no point in arguing with him, Todoroki says distractedly. He's comparing two stats sheets, looking back and forth between them with his brow furrowed. I've had to sit through meetings about this stuff. It's always guesswork. But these look like very good guesses. Dororoki, Saro says very seriously. You gotta share with the rest of us. You can't snatch Midoriya up and hog him all to yourself once you graduate. This statement startles Izuku so much he knocks his pencil off the table. He dives down to retrieve it, cheeks blazing red. He's not a vending machine item. Todoroki's voice says from somewhere above him. Besides, he's going to have lots of opportunities. He'll be able to choose whatever interests him most. Izuku doesn't reemerge immediately after locating his dropped pencil. He knows his thoughts must show on his face and he's too embarrassed to let the others see. He desperately wants to ask Todoroki what he means. Is it something he's thought about too? Could Izuku apply to work at Todoroki's agency that easily, even without a quirk? Or is Todoroki trying to let him down gently and guide him away from the possibility? Or maybe this, like the trajectories he's just calculated, is all conjecture. Anyway, Minoru. Realizing too late that he started mumbling, Izuku quickly tries to straighten up and bumps the top of his head on the underside of the table. Yelps! Are you okay? Izuku asks. I'm fine! Izuku says maybe the bump on his head will cover up why he looks like such a deer in headlights all of a sudden. He hopes, anyway. Oh, Todoroki's in the bathroom? The last door towards the back of the cabin. Todoroki directs him. Thanks! Izuku says, scurrying away quickly. He sighs as he locks the door behind himself. He doesn't have to use the bathroom. He just needed a place to regain his composure. Also, his eyes are watering from the bump on his head, and he doesn't want anybody to think he's crying. The last thing he wanted tonight was for all his expectations and questions and uncertainties to get in the way of just enjoying things. He splashes his face with cold water vigorously. This gala is the pinnacle of coolest things he will ever do in his life. And he doesn't want to let his brain ruin the event or the time he actually gets to spend with Todoroki. Izuku chews on his lip. It's felt for a while like things have been building up to this weekend. All the phone calls, the time they've spent together. After this, what happens? Todoroki is immeasurably busy with things and people all far more important than Izuku. He can't continue indefinitely making time for Izuku like he has been, and Izuku would never expect him to. But he also can't help but wonder how often he'll see Todoroki after the gala is over and done with. Lost in thought, he bites down on his lip too hard, nearly breaking the skin. Ow! He winces, licking the sore spot tenderly. The image of Todoroki appears in his mind, unbidden, licking his lips as he watches Izuku talk, and his friend's voice in his head reminds him, He seems very focused. His mom's voice comes next, a knowing smile, and even more knowing, He likes you! And then a memory of Izuku's name in that voice right in his ear, Todoroki murmuring, Izuku. Okay! Izuku yelps frantically, cranking on the cold water again. There's a shower in here. Maybe he should just dunk his whole head under. No, that would definitely look suspicious when he comes out. He wets his face again and then dries it with one of the fluffy hand towels. I am calm! He tells his reflection in the mirror. I am totally cool, and I am not thinking about kissing Todoroki. Wait, what? Why is he thinking about kissing Todoroki? The soothing voice that announced their takeoff filters over speakers in the bathroom, and he nearly jumps out of his skin. We may be experiencing some slight turbulence. We would like to ask all passengers to please take their seats. He's just going to have to pull it together. He pats his cheeks and unlocks the door, heading back to where the others are sitting. Right as he passes by Todoroki, the whole plane hits a pocket of rough air, lurching unexpectedly and completely unbalancing Izuku. He flails, but before he could fall flat on his butt and injure himself a second time, Todoroki shoots a hand out and grabs him around the waist. Izuku topples over with a squeak and finds himself suddenly seated very securely. 
and on Rookie's lap. Well, there goes any last hope of staying calm. Oh, Sarah says, eyebrows raised at them. Rescue open gear. Everybody get giggles. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Izuku says shrilly. Oh, no. The shoulder rocket is so warm and also so much bigger looking down at Izuku with an arm still wrapped around his waist. Any heat Izuku had managed to dissipate from his face with all the cold water splashing as immediately rushed back in. His cheeks felt molten hot. Sorry. You don't have to apologize. Todoroki says, I knew it though. Izuku thinks hopelessly, but Todoroki doesn't know that because he is unaware of how carefully Izuku is mentally filing away every detail regarding the entire experience of Todoroki Shoto's warm lap. Todoroki helps him scoot over to sit on the sofa next to him just as the plane rolls again. It's a bit dizzying and makes Izuku's stomach swoop strangely, though not as much as literally falling into Todoroki's lap at. Hey, but Izuku-kun, do you want some water? Amaranko asks kindly. He looks kind of pale, Shoto. This is pretty routine turbulence, Todoroki explains, perhaps mistaking Izuku's mortified silence for nerves. Amaranko hands Todoroki a glass of ice water that he passes to Izuku. We'll be landing soon. Izuku nods, not daring to look at them, but the conversation between Todoroki and his friends resumes quickly enough without anyone dwelling on the weirdness of the moment. Todoroki reclines back against the couch, stretching his arm over the backrest behind Izuku. The next time the plane judders, causing Izuku to jump, he feels a gentle hand ruffle his hair briefly. Todoroki scoots over slightly so their legs are almost touching, and Izuku glances at him, but the hero is still engrossed in talking to Saro and Obaraka about what some of their classmates have been up to recently. It's not wholly unexpected, since Todoroki has always seemed more willing to look past his awkwardness than most people. Still, it helps Izuku to relax, and before too long, he's staring at the plane windows at Hokkaido below them as they come in for their landing. They part ways with the other two heroes as they all head to their respective hotels to get ready for the evening. It takes some time to get to where Todoroki and Izuku will be staying by a car, and they pass the drive discussing who will be in attendance and who might win some of the awards that year. Izuku can barely keep his jaw from dropping as they pull up through the impressive entryway of the hotel. It looks even more beautiful than it did in the pictures, a luxury ryokan-style resort with a modern touch. Tranquil even amidst the bustle of the city. The staff is expecting them, and they don't even have to check in at the concierge. Instead, they are discreetly taken up to their rooms on the uppermost floors, where Todoroki has booked two suites for their overnight stay. There is apparently personal concierge service on offer, as well as a butler! Though Izuku can't imagine what he might possibly need a butler for! And Todoroki reassures him before he heads to his own room. If Izuku needs anything, he's right down the hall. They'll be reconvening again at 4.30 in just a couple hours, so Izuku thinks he will probably be able to manage that long on his own. He ends up wasting a fair amount of time documenting everything about the room as soon as the staff have departed. The bed is enormous and soft when he face plants directly into it. The windows have an incredible view, looking out over the whole city towards the distant mountain range. The bathroom is similarly stunning, with a full sunken tub that he desperately wants to try. He sends about two dozen pictures to his mom, which she exclaims very satisfactorily over, before he gets interrupted by a knock on the door. Hello, Midoriya Kern. Aiko greets him as he opens it to admit her and what seems to be a small army of stylists. Shoto told you we were coming, right? Oh, yes! Izuku says, his flushed face and permanently surprised expression probably give off the impression that he was not expecting this. He was, it's just that he forgot in all his excitement over the suite. Come in! Aiko introduces him to the stylist team, and barely has he said hello to everyone that they start pushing their hands into his hair and turning his head this way and that. I'm going to check on Shoto now. Aiko tells him cheerfully as he is dragged away to his fashionable fate. You're in good hands, Midori again. As it turns out, he is in very good hands. In addition to all the experts who make sure Todoroki is always field ready, he has an extremely capable team working behind the scenes to ensure he's always camera ready for events like these as well. This, Izuku suspects, is more Aiko's doing than Todoroki himself, but he's certainly the last person to complain, given the incredibly vast array of Todoroki pictures he's saved to his phone and various computer folders over the years. 
and now they're hellbent on turning this same expertise on him. They end up washing his hair again so they can style it properly, blow drying it after putting some fancy, nice smelling product in it to make it manageable instead of messy. Somehow, they get his bangs to fall to the side a little bit, half off his forehead. It makes his hair look more deliberately rumpled as opposed to wildly unfamable. No, nope, no! Nope. One of them, the woman who seems to be in charge of the team, says right before another can start dabbing some kind of beige skin-colored cream on Izuka's cheeks. I guess that nothing on his face. The other one clicks her tongue. He's so pale, though. He is fine, says the first, waving her hand. Todoroki-san likes all these fraggles. Izuku gapes at her. D did he say that? That's what I just said, the woman tells him. And if it comes from her, it means he is good as said it. Izuku rubs his cheeks hard. Oh! She smacks his hand away. You're going to make your face blotchy. He really doesn't know what to do with the new information he's been given. And now that his hair is done, he's pretty much good to go. All that's left is to change into his suit, which has been freshly pressed and delivered to his room personally. They wait until Izuku has gotten dressed to make sure everything still fits correctly. The gray suit is still perfect, and after helping him with his tie and smoothing everything into place, he's finally ready. Thanks, he tells the team breathlessly, and they all give him encouraging nods. Right on cue, there's a knock on the door. As everyone starts to bustle around, cleaning up their styling tools, Izuku hurries to answer it. It's 4.30 on the nose. He pulls it open. He's struck absolutely speechless. Todoroki stands waiting at his door. He took the words to heart when Izuku had suggested he wear something dark colored. His suit is full black on black. Black fitted shirt under an ink dark vest, black tie. His coat also black is sleekly aligned with his torso to show off his distractingly strong shoulders. The pants are so dark, yet so shiny, possessing a rich luster that only serves to highlight how nice Todoroki's legs are. Long and powerful like the rest of him. Against the pale skin of his throat, his wrists, with his hair swept off his forehead, the suit makes him look more than just mature. He looks darkly enigmatic like a handsome vampire from a movie or something. Like if Izuku let himself, Todoroki could steal him away and he'd be lost forever. Izuku is sure he'd never want to come back. Whoa! Izuku whispers accidentally out loud. Yeah. Todoroki mumbles back, which seems odd until Izuku tears his eyes away from Todoroki's everything and looks at his face and realizes Todoroki is staring at him in return. Oh! Izuku says and Todoroki's gaze jerks upward to meet his. He looks as surprised as Izuku feels. Hi, Todoroki says. Hi! Izuku responds. You, uh, Todoroki starts to say, waving his hand vaguely above his head. You did something to your hair. I, yeah, Izuku says before shaking his head rapidly because he in fact did nothing. I mean, your stylists did, they, uh, they brushed it. Oh, Todoroki says. It looks, it looks good. Oh, really? Izuku asks. Yeah. Oh, good. Izuku stares before realizing how arrogant that sounds. You, also, your hair looks good. Not just your hair, all of you. It looks good. Thank you. Is Dodogi says. Izuku puts it in over his face. I mean, the suit. All of Todoroki does look very, very good, but how weird does that sound? You recommended it, Todoroki reminds him. I did, huh? Izuku says. He feels very biased suddenly and can't help but giggle. It does come out somewhat hysterical, but he's just. This is surreal. Good job, me. He might be imagining it, but he thinks Todoroki gives him another quick once over, eyes flicking down and then back up again. Good job on a lot of things. Izuku laughs nervously again. To time to go? Todoroki nods. If we don't want to be late. It takes about an hour to get to the venue where the gala is being held. The event doesn't officially start until 6, but there's one more important thing to do before it gets in full swing. They pull up to the curb, and as people hurry to open the car doors for them, Todoroki says, You don't have to smile if you don't want to. Just wave. And ignore all the yelling. Oh, and don't look directly into the flashes. Wait, can you repeat? Izuku starts to say, but then the car doors are opening, and he feels like present Mike is shouting directly in his face, which actually is almost exactly what's happening. 
There he is! Everyone's favorite smoking hot and dashing little hero, Shadow! And he's that with him! The amount of camera flashes that pop off in Izuku's face blind him almost instantly. He stumbles getting out of the car, but the big steady hands plays warm at the small of his back, making sure he doesn't fall. I know it's the worst, Todoroki mutters to him under his breath. Actually, Izuku has gone to a lot of events like these, one of the many, many faces lining the red carpet past the roped-off barriers and security guards. He's just never been the one the cameras are pointed at. Still, he grins at Todoroki, or at least tries to. There's still so many spots swimming in front of his eyes, he can't actually tell if he's even looking at the hero. People are just really excited to see you, he says. I know how that is. There are tons of people in the crowd wearing Shoto merchandise, waving signs, trying to get his attention. A lot of people are pointing at Izuku. Shoto waves at them, and they get stopped for pictures and questions a couple times. Todoroki gets complimented on his choice of attire, which he seems oddly appreciative about. Thanks, he tells the reporter. Midoriya recommended the suit. Izuku nearly chokes on his tongue. Not exactly! Todoroki ignores his protests, conveniently spotting something to point out in the ground. Midoriya, look, he says. Izuku follows the line of his arm and sees what he's pointing at. There are two girls in the crowd, both waving and yelling something. They're wearing Shoto gear, but when Izuku looks their way, they both start waving wildly. Izuku has no idea what's going on until Todoroki says, They're fans of yours, so you should wave back. Izuku blinks, uncomprehending. They're what? Izuku raises his hand and gives them a tiny wave as a hesitant smile. They both start jumping up and down, squeezing each other's hands in excitement. Izuku thinks they might be screaming, and then he realizes they are. They're shouting something about autographs. One of them holds up her Shoto poster and pen. Me? Izuku asks, pointing at himself. Tororogi pushes him forward. On wobbly legs, he meets them at the velvet ropes. Most people don't pay him that much attention, still trying to get pictures of Tororogi, who stays safely out of reach. But Izuku signs his name as neatly as he can, with a hastily added, Thank you for saying hi. You're a hero! One of the girls tells him, and he reflexively hides behind his hands in shock, which in turn makes her also cover her face in embarrassment. Thank you, he says as he's hurried along by staff who are already shepherding Todoroki towards some of the interviewers before they get inside the venue. Well, 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 someone says as they draw near and Izuku recognizes the very familiar face of Charge Bolt who gets nearly as many gigs as a celebrity host with his electrifying personality as he does hero work. Look who it is! He's disarmingly magnetic in person, grin a million watts so bright it nearly makes Izuku overlook the mic in his hand and the cameras following his every move. But Todoroki appears completely at ease with him, which makes it easier for Izuku to relax. How have you been, Kaminari? Todoroki asks. All the usual, Kaminari says. Pretty awesome. Glad you could grace us with your presence this evening and happy to have you back in Japan. You freaked us all out pretty good. You holding up okay after that? Izuku vaguely recognizes the flow of an interview question, but it's casual, and Todoroki doesn't seem put off by it. Kaminari is good at what he does, especially at an event like this, where he knows so many of the attendees. He makes every interview seem like a conversation between two friends just catching up. Todoroki talks a bit about his speedy recovery following his recent injury, reassuring Kaminari that he's doing just fine. Kaminari does seem genuinely relieved to hear it, although he must have already known most of the details given their class network. Well, so I'm glad you made it tonight. And, uh, I can't help but notice. Not alone! Content just to listen, Izuku startles when attention suddenly shifts to him. He bows and waves at the camera. Hello! Kaminari grins and turns to Todoroki. He really doesn't need it at this point, but gonna introduce us? Todoroki does that thing again, settles his hand at the base of Izuku's spine, a little protective and very calming. This is Midoriya Izuku, my... He looks down at Izuku, glances up at him, wondering why he paused. He's my guest. Midoriya-kun! Kaminari says. How are you enjoying the evening so far? Izuku leans into the mic when it's thrust toward him. Oh, it's amazing! I'm super excited to be here! How about yourself? This makes Kaminari laugh. I'm having a pretty good time, thanks for asking. This is why everyone keeps saying he's more polite than me, Todoroki comments. To be fair, that's not hard to achieve. 
Kaminari says, his grin getting wider when Todoroki shakes his head. Conspiratorially, right underneath the nose of Todoroki's impassive stare, he tells Izuku, You know, this guy has never brought anybody to one of these events before, right? Like, ever? This is something Izuku knows, because what doesn't he know about Todoroki, but somehow he has a thought of tonight in those times. I'm, he says, not sure what exactly he's supposed to say this. I feel very lucky to be here tonight. I'm sure you're not the only one, Kaminari says. Thank you so much for your time, you two. I'll catch up with you later. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Interview completed. They're funneled on through, finally stepping into the main doors to the hall itself. Inside, the atmosphere is lively, but less frantic. Music drifts throughout the venue from a live band, and the floor is packed with people mingling and talking. Everywhere Izuku looks, he spots familiar faces, heroes he thought he'd only ever see up close through his computer monitor. Now he's in the same room as all of them at once. It's incredible! But the most amazing thing to happen yet, probably, is when Todoroki leans closer to say quietly, Kaminori was right, actually. About what? Izuku asks, standing on his tiptoes to catch a glimpse of someone he thinks might have been the million. I feel pretty damn lucky that you're here tonight, too. Izuku spins around to look at him. Todoroki just smiles before looking away across the hall. Want to check out the food? He asks as though he hasn't just racked Izuku's world once again. Food does sound good, and Izuku would follow Todoroki pretty much anywhere, so he says, Lead the way! He feels like he's walking on air, all of his area worries suddenly seeming pointless. The night is just getting started, and whatever happens after is a million miles away, like the ground scene from the windows of an airplane. <laughs>